Yellowstone supervolcano nearby 6.5 Idaho and Swarm after the Salt Lake 5.7 and Swarm still going on and the YVO alert information. And we also had activity around north and south of Los Angeles felt by thousands of people. The 4.8 and Swarm as well, 5.3, 5.6 magnitude around Los Angeles and uh, all these people there must be very careful. But this is the April 1st Yellowstone Volcano Observatory Volcano Update. And it's the um, April 1st Recent Works and News and the Seismicity. And they state it's been an eventful month. Magnitude 5.7 earthquake near Salt Lake City, Utah, March 18, and the 6.5 magnitude in central Idaho, March 31st. And of course, the earthquakes there are still ongoing. And we'll take a look at them later, but they're just, uh, there's a lot of activity there, especially in Utah. And that's exactly in the craters of the moon area where they expect the next uh, eruption, which is like clockwork. And... Um, the last time it happened, Craters of the Moon, and you, it's what we're having our, uh, it's just uh, northeast of Boise, Idaho, is the uh, area of that expected quake in Craters of the Moon. And it happens every 3,000 years. Last time it happened was 2,100 years ago. So this is what Yellowstone is informing us. These earthquakes are caused by tectonic extension of the region, and they're not related to Yellowstone nor will they have a significant impact on the Yellowstone system. Even though they shook up to Manitoba in Canada and all the way down to San Francisco and even Los Angeles, the 6.5 definitely. Uh, now, uh, some strong, of course they shook Yellowstone. Now, some strong earthquakes in the region like the 1983 magnitude 6.9 Bora Peak, Idaho, and the 1959 Hebgen Lake, and uh, just uh, west of uh, the caldera, the earthquakes have impacted geyser behavior, but that's due to the response of the shallow and fragile geyser conduits to shaking. It's not yet clear if the magnitude 6.5 in central Idaho will have an impact. Observations of the geyser activity over the coming days two weeks will, of course, answer that question. Now, we have seen the... Uh, geodesy deformation of Hebgen Lake, and we saw that it was going, I still have my notes here, Hebgen Lake was going um, southwest and inflating, whereas the caldera was going southwest but deflating. Okay, and I'll leave a link below for you for that geodesy. You can see that they have all the GPS stations worldwide, and um, for the sake of brevity, I won't, you know, just take my word for it. You can look into that. Hebgen Lake is inflating, whereas uh, the caldera and Yellowstone Lake is deflating. So there's a lot of movement in that area. And of course it's inflating because of the fact that there's magma coming in. They also found a dome in the middle of Yellowstone Lake, and that's inflating. So they're, they're figuring that the, the dome is inflating because there's magma um, coming underneath, even though the general area is deflating. Now, going back to this, they will keep an eye on the geyser activity and they'll in the coming days and weeks be studying that if there will be any changes. Steamboat Geyser in North Geyser Basin experienced three water eruptions in the past on March 6, 15 and 25th and that brings the total number of eruptions this year up to now to nine. Now as far as earthquakes are concerned in Yellowstone, during March the University of Utah seismograph stations responded responsible for the operation and analysis of Yellowstone Seismic Network, located 111 earthquakes in the park region. That means that, okay, outside the park region is uh, Hebgen and northwest of that, definitely they had more earthquakes. Now, they're only including the park region for some, uh, er, uh, some reason. Um, 111 earthquakes. The largest event was a minor earthquake of magnitude 3.1, five miles north-northwest of West Yellowstone, Montana, March 31st, and the monthly seismicity in Yellowstone included two earthquake swarms. 
The largest earthquake swarm occurred about seven miles east-northeast of West Yellowstone during March 21st to 29, and that had 19 earthquakes ranging from 0 to 2.1. The largest swarm event occurred on March 28 at 10, 11 p.m. And number two, the swarm of 15 earthquakes ranging in magnitude from 0 0.1 to 1.7 occurred about nine miles east of West Yellowstone, Montana, during March 5th to 14, the largest swarm event occurred March 12th at 2.51 a.m. The earthquake sequences like these are common and they account for about 50% of the total seismicity in the Yellowstone region. Yellowstone earthquake activities remain at background levels, they said. And of course, I forgot to tell you that the, the alert level is normal uh, color code green, of course. Now, um, the ground deformation the overall deformation style and rate at Yellowstone remains unchanged since the last update. Subsidence of Yellowstone caldera, as we said before, is going down even though it's moving southwest. Uh, subsidence at Yellowstone caldera, which has been ongoing since 2015, continues at an average of two to three centimeters a year. That's about an inch a year, with minor fluctuations related to seasonal changes in the area of North Geyser Basin. GPS data indicate the start of subsidence September 2019, accumulating about a little over an inch of subsidence to the end of the year. That subsidence paused in early 2020, and no significant changes at Norris have been recorded since the start of the year. An example of GPS data, UNAVCO, and I'll leave the geodesy for you'll see, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory provides, as we said, long-term monitoring of volcanic and earthquake activity in the Yellowstone Park region. It's the site of the largest, most diverse collection of natural thermal features in the world. It has 60% of the world's geysers, as we said, 10,000 uh, hydrothermal areas, one of the five USGS volcano observatories that monitor volcanoes in the United States for science and public safety, and it's the second largest supervolcano in the world. And as we know, the world has about over 20, 20 for sure, if not more, supervolcanoes. And this is the second largest one. This is a, an example of Castle Geyser. And this is not far from uh, Old Faithful. And uh, it goes off quite often, obviously. Okay, here we are at Geodesi. And uh, I'll leave a link below for you for this. But let's just go out to, uh, this has all of the GPS stations in the world. And uh, this is uh, Yellowstone around here, Wyoming. Let's go into that and we'll go into our, uh, okay. National Forest, Billings, Montana. And there is, where's the lake? Sorry, there's so many, see, I can't see, okay. Grand Teton. Okay, there's Yellowstone Lake. There's Yellowstone, and that is uh, Hebgen Lake. Let's take um, P456. That's the one I saw okay, beforehand. Okay, that's just an, an example. This is east, north, east, east. If it goes up, it's going east. This is going down, so it's going west. If it's going up, it's going north. It's going down, so it's going south. This is going southwest. And as you can see, seasonal but increasing, up to 2020, it's increasing, okay? And that's that's Hebgen Lake. And let's go to, uh, where are we? Okay, that's Hebgen Lake, yes, well, it's, well, okay, this is it right here. And let's go to, um, which one was it, PZ? HV, where are we? No. That's a, no, no, no. Where is it? Okay, let's take any one of these. No, that's not good. Okay, that's not good. It has interruptions. And let's open them up a little bit more. Okay, there we go. That's Hebgen Lake. Uh, sorry, Yellowstone Lake. Do we have a good one here? Let's see that. Okay, there we go. It's going west, south, 
and it's basically steady but deflating right here. That's deflating. And should we take another one? Should we take another one? Let's take this one. Is that good? Yes. Okay, that again is going uh, southwest and it's steady, basically steady, a little bit of deflation, but it's going steady. And No, I want something something closer. That's not at all good. Something closer. Did we already take this one? That's not good at all. Okay. P three fifty six. That's uh, steady to deflating. Southwest steady to deflating. But I want one closer to uh, the lake. That's um, let's go here in the caldera. Most of these are not all good, as we can see. Okay, that's much better. P714. It's southwest and um, basically steady. And this is towards Hebgen Lake. A little bit of inflation, but uh, otherwise it's steady. Yes. Quarry. No. Why does it say that's a quarry? Is that a quarry there? No. Well, it must be. That's terrible. Okay, but you can see, you can um, get the information as to the movement, and this one is all over the place. You see that it's heaving, breathing. It's going southwest. It's going southwest. And it's inflating and deflating, inflating, deflating, inflating, and steady. Basically, a little bit of inflation since to the year 2000, up to now. So you can see there's a lot of movement there. So I'll leave a link below for you for this geodesy as well. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.